Hey everybody, it's Yogi. I'm here with a skills video of sorts. This is actually a request from Carol Steffi from the Keto Kitchen with Yogi and or with Carrie Brown and Yogi Parker group on Facebook. And she wanted to know how to poach an egg and still have the runny yolk on the inside, but not overcook her egg and not undercook her egg. So we're gonna go over how to poach an egg in a pan. But I also wanted to say too, is if you don't want to go through the hassle of a pan, you could actually get one of these little devices, a bunch of little companies make them. Um, and they have a, it's a steamer that makes hard boiled eggs, soft boiled eggs. And they have pans on the inside that you can put your egg yolks in and poach your eggs or make an omelet or, or something like that. If you really want to go the easy route. I like things more complicated. So, what I do, I've grown up poaching eggs in, in the frying pan, and I love poaching eggs in the frying pan, and to me, I don't know if it's a psychological thing, but to me, it just tastes different when it's in a frying pan. So, I have my cast iron skillet right here, and I'm getting some water nice and hot. You want the water to a rolling boil, before you put your eggs in. And the reason why is because if the water is too cool, your eggs are gonna spread apart in the water and separate and kind of get all that spider web, cobweb kind of thing going on. So what you, I, I can actually hide behind this. We, we, we don't have a kitchen for tall people. So if I get out of view, I'm sorry. But we want to get the uh, we want to get the water nice and hot so we don't get that cobweb effect. Now the other thing that happens when you poach eggs uh, often, if you poach them in just water, the you'll get that kind of slime foamy texture on top, and a lot of the egg whites will separate out. So what you want to add to your boiling water before you add your eggs is you want to add some apple cider vinegar or some other type of acid. I've also used lemon juice white vinegar. I do like to add apple cider vinegar for the mineral content. Um, the eggs may absorb some of the minerals from the unfiltered apple cider vinegar and make it slightly more nutritious. So put that in there and I'm also going to use some salt. What we have right here is we got some good Redmond's real salt. I like using a real natural good quality salt instead of an iodized table salt. And for all of these things, we have links below, sometimes even for discounts on a lot of products, especially things like Redmond's. I mean, Redmond's is one of my favorite salts, so I, I use them quite a bit. So while we're waiting for this thing to get more, let's talk about the eggs. Now, I got a couple of brown eggs here, and if you wanna make things easier on yourself, what you could do is actually take a couple of bowls. You'll make things easier yourself initially. Hold on a second. But you'll actually give yourself a little bit more cleanup. So we'll move these. What you can do is crack your egg into a bowl first. Okay? So it's there so that when you slide it into the water, you just kind of do this and you don't run the risk of trying to like crack the egg and get eggshells in there or something. So if, you, if you're really bad at cracking eggs and you, you're worried about getting eggshells in there, you can do this step first and then pour it in there and it actually can make life easier for you. Now the tools we're gonna be using. I've got a slotted spoon to get underneath the egg and scoop it out. But I also have this spoon, okay? If you don't have enough water depth in your, in your bowl to get the, the egg whites cooked over the top of the egg, you can actually kind of baste the egg a little bit with some of the hot water by taking a regular spoon and just pouring it over. And then that way you can cook that top layer, but still leave those yolks nice and runny. We are still waiting for the, uh, the pan to boil, but it's getting close. 
I may have to do some editing. So, if you guys have any questions or videos that you'd like to see, what we're trying to do is actually make some basic cooking skill videos for people who may have not had a whole lot of experience in the kitchen. And if you join our group, our Facebook group, The Keto Kitchen with Carrie Brown and Yogi Parker, you can get involved in there and you can actually tag us into some, and make some requests in the Facebook group and we can see if we can accommodate those requests in future videos. We really want people to be able to have the skills to cook for themselves, control their own ingredients, so it gives them greater control of their health. And it's, it really, when you, when you were reliant on packaged foods and, and not fresh foods, you can often run into a lot of issues with nefarious ingredients that may or may, may not be actually listed in the ingredients list, higher sugars and carbs. So when you're cooking your own food, it can be so much better for your health. You could go to Walmarts, you can go to stores all over the place, find things that are labeled keto. If you're not keto, vegetarian or, or whatever, and then you look at the ingredients and it'll advertise as though it's healthy for you, but it's complete junk food on a lot of the ingredients. So you really got to be careful. We are now starting to get a, a boil. It's starting to roll up on here. So it's getting closer. I'm going to move this over. I'm actually going to turn the heat up a little bit more, see if we can't get it closer faster. Um, yep. Good times. Makes great TV to watch water boil. Just there. All right. Another place you want to hit up to uh, is the blog, carriebrown.com. There is a uh, ton of free recipes on there and links to discounts on ingredients and, and other supplies. So if you go on to that link, you could actually see a bunch of easy to follow, easy to do, very precise recipes for all kinds of things made from natural ingredients and even some desserts and some ice cream, things like that. So really good. All right, so we're starting to get a boil here. It's starting to get hot enough. I'm going to go ahead and drop my first egg in and I'm just going to pour it in real slow, work it in. There we go. And I'm going to crack the other egg in. I put them in slow so that they didn't uh, go all throughout the pan and spread apart. And then that way everything stays together and you don't have a big spider webby nest of poached egg. Instead you're going to have a nice little tight little circle. There's other things you could do if you want to kind of uh, cheat the process a little bit. They do make silicone egg cups or even glass egg cups or metal egg cups where you grease the inside of them, put the egg in, and when your water is boiling, you just put them in there and you make a poached egg. It's a, if it's easier for you to do that, that's fine. I, I, I do prefer, prefer the uh, traditional. Um, we almost had a cameo of a cat because there's a lot of cats in here. A lot of them. I think they're plotting against me sometimes. So. Like this one. That's Ermintrude. She's my buddy. We hang out quite a bit. She say hi, Arm. Say hi. Woohoo! All right. So, I'm starting to get the tops or the bottoms actually uh, nice and done. 
And because I want the runny yolks, I'm going to scoop underneath and loosen these up, make sure that they don't stick to the bottom of the pan and that they're floating around here. But because I want that runny yolk, I'm going to go ahead and start spooning some hot water over the top until I make that little egg white layering over the top become opaque. Now some people like harder yolks. In that case, you don't have to do this and you can leave the eggs in a bit longer and kind of more like a hard, harder boiled egg. I do like the real runny yolks. I love to take things like a Fox Hill Kitchen bagel bun or, or something like that and dip it into the yolks after I break them and kind of, kind of like I did with toast and stuff when I was a trucker before I went keto and I'd be getting the, uh, the breakfast at the diner with the fried eggs or poached eggs and a big piece of toast and you get the, the, the Fox Hill bagels. Juliet Fox Hill does a really great job of making these, these uh, grain-free keto bagels. And also you can check the, the link below because we also have a discount code on those. And you can see I just kind of basted the top of the egg. And now that top of the egg is nice and opaque. And I can get under here with the slotted spoon. Let all the water drain off. And I can put it right in my bowl. Now this is great. If you love like hollandaise sauce with, you know, good eggs benedict over some salmon or something like that. You use this technique to make some fantastic regular poached eggs. Or if you just like poached eggs right there. Now I've got my cast iron skillet right here. See the eggs? Nice and poached. I got my cast iron skillet right here and I boiled water in it. Because it's a cast iron skillet and it takes a lot of seasoning for it to be nonstick, I want to re-season this after I clean the pan up a little bit, get the eggs out, so it gets that nice nonstick layer. We also have a video on how to season and take care and repair uh, cast iron skillets on our YouTube page. If you're interested in that, check that out as well. All right, everybody. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next video.